Welcome to the 2021 PBS KVIE Art Auction Awards Ceremony. Now in its 40th year, the Art Auction celebrates the creativity of artists throughout Northern California, with proceeds benefiting your PBS station, KVIE. This year's collection features over 250 works of art, which will be up for bid October 1st through 3rd. Watch live on PBS KVIE for the broadcast or online at kvie.org slash art auction. Thank you for making art a part of your life today. And now, let the awards ceremony begin. Thanks for joining us for the 2021 PBS KVIE Art Auction Awards Ceremony. I'm David Lowe, and it's my honor to start things off. This year, we celebrate 40 years of the art auction, and we're so grateful to all of the participating artists who generously donated their artwork to the station's largest fundraising event. All the proceeds generated from the auction in October benefit the programs and services that the station provides to everyone in our community. The art this year, it's amazing, and it's evidence of the tremendous artistic talent that we have in our region. We always look forward to presenting the jury awards to showcase the outstanding artwork in the auction collection. And today, we're proud to announce each of the first place winners in the six juried categories, plus the winner of the best frame design competition, and of course, best of show. We have an exceptional group of jurors who selected the awards this year, and we thank them for their participation in the process. We also appreciate the participation of our community framing businesses who donated their services to frame artwork. I'd also like to acknowledge this year's art auction sponsors for their support of PBS KVIE, as well as our volunteer board of directors for their leadership and enthusiasm towards our arts initiatives. Earlier this year, we lost one of our community's beloved and most distinguished artists, Gregory Condos. We're dedicating this year's auction in Gregory's memory, in recognition of his tremendous contribution to the arts in our region and for his longtime support of our auction over the years. As we move towards the auction broadcast in October, I'd like to remind you that all of the art is available for viewing in person at the station in accordance with current health guidelines. You're invited to come to the station and explore this year's collection. You can even place pre-bids if you'd like, and of course, you'll be enjoying the buildup to the live auction. And you can visit during normal business hours, Monday through Friday, that's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you'd like to view the artwork online, you can go to kvie.org slash art auction to view the collection and place your pre-bids there. The PBS KVIE Art Auction is a unique experience for everyone in the community. Thank you for making it possible and for being a part of 40 years of art history for everyone to enjoy in our region. Happy viewing, bidding, and collecting. And now I'd like to introduce our art curator, Jill Estroff, who will be presenting this year's awards. Thank you, David. This was an exceptional year for art, and I'm so grateful to be here as the art curator for the art auction. The artwork is incredible and includes work from artists new to the auction, as well as returning favorites. That made it really difficult for our jurors to choose this year's winners given the high caliber of artwork this year. Let's begin with the first place winners in each of our juried categories. In the contemporary category, first place goes to Butterflies Are Free by Dwight Head, item 43E. Dwight has been a lifelong artist and it shows. Contemporary juror Chris Dobear said, Butterflies Are Free contains an entire vocabulary of contemporary issues with the jangled composition, with the juxtaposition of hand-drawn and media-based images, rendered in brilliant colors. Elegant drawings of memento mori feature our eventual passing, combined with images of butterflies, signaling an eternal spring. His use of Edward Mybridge's Running Man embellished with colored pencils seems a fitting statement for our times. For figurative, First place goes to Ghetto Child by Robert Simmons, item 26B. Self-taught, this artist also showed talent early on, but was unable to accept an art scholarship. His career in the military and law enforcement kept him from his passion for drawing until 2015 when he began again in earnest with his mother's encouragement. 
Ghetto Child is based on a photograph that reminded Robert of his childhood in Chicago. Figurative juror Jennifer Baczynski chose Robert's work strictly on formal elements. The content is completely different, she said, and for the skill level. The hand at the top is so strange and wonderful, and she loves the graphic quality and how the skateboard frames the face and that it works on so many different levels. Our first place winner in landscape goes to Clips in Color by Lenora Morris, item 1F. In her own words, Clips in Color is free, painterly, bold, and brilliant, giving unique shapes and formations of rocks more color to give depth. Landscape juror Miles Herman said, fearless brush strokes imbue this painting with a nod to Selden Guile and Society of Six Painters with a retro feel to the palette, a landscape verging toward abstraction, but with the familiar shapes of a seaside idol. The artist was experimenting with new acrylic paint and felt drawn to use almost every color. First place in photography goes to Needle Sunrise by Paul Lambie. Item 17A. Photography juror Donald Satterley really liked the other world quality of this unusual Canyonlands image. He said there's a grandeur to the scene that is compelling, but the jagged ridge line has a rugged starkness. In Needle Sunrise, early morning side lighting gives the vertical formations added dimension. He thought the colorful variations in the horizontal strata were fascinating. The composition includes many intriguing elements, such as the scraggly trees in the foreground and the small pools in the rock face. First place in sculpture is Listening for the Sound by Marcelia Bombola, item 11F. The artist wanted to create the feel of rushing water, movement over rocks that she felt while whitewater rafting, depicting listening for the sound of the water first. She achieved this effect by taking a large glass vase and creating a rough surface and applying sand and varied blue and white shades of acrylic paint. Juror Joya Fonda gave this first place in sculpture for its wide variety of color and textures and the way it was smooth and warm inside, cool and crusty outside, with aspects of nature and lichen. It also made her think of geothermal pools and calcifications. First place for still life is up close, Kathy James Robinson, item 22D. Still life juror Cecily Hastings chose up close for unusual composition, incredible detail and balance of large shapes and many tiny shapes, very well crafted. For this composition done in her studio, Kathy zoomed into a portion of a photograph she took at a private sunflower garden. She's inspired by her love of bees and sharing how important they are to our environment. Her work is typically based on realism and detail and up close is no exception. Kathy also paints nature images that include animals, birds, and landscapes. And now for our best of show, Reach for the Heights by Susan Ballinger, item 1B. Landscape juror Miles Herman noted that artist Sue Ballinger is not afraid of big pigment. He said in Reach for the Heights, the compositional balance of more than three-fourths of the canvas given over to sky and tree with a sliver of earth and a hint of structure creates a tension that disregards the conventional use of space and exemplifies the feel of an autumn sky. Sue decided to feature the dramatic fall color in her Citrus Heights neighborhood and began with a series of small studies on location, her driveway, and then painted the larger 20 by 20 inch work in her studio. Like much of Sue's work, this painting is done in a unified color range with loose brushwork born from her beginnings in watercolor, using similar techniques in acrylics by building up layers. Jurors chose from six first place winners to award this best of show. And now for our final awards announcement, I'd like to present the Best Frame Design Award and honorable mentions selected by the 2021 Art Auction Framing Judge, Cynthia Larson of Larson Jewel. The first honorable mention goes to r and Framing for their design for Picket Fence by Jim McMahon, item 32B. With a touch of whimsy, this frame was a natural choice to complement the black and white photo and image composition. The next honorable mention goes to Choice Framing 
for their design for Stormy Days Gone By by Doug Parks, item 27B. The frame captures the cloudy sky, but also has an underlying brightness that complements the sunniness of the photograph. And the winner of the 2021 Best Frame Design Award goes to Blue Bus Framing at the Hanley Gallery for their design for Ghetto Child by Robert Simmons, item 26B. The framer paid great respect to the art by assembling a skillful and beautiful overall frame package. Congratulations to Blue Bus Framing at the Hanley Gallery for being our winner this year and to all of our community framing partners. We thank you for taking your time and resources to frame artwork this year. This concludes our awards presentation. Thank you for joining us. And remember, you can see the art in person on display at KBIE through September 29th. And don't forget to watch live October 1st through 3rd.